is, as you can see, very, you know, I, I didn't go to graphic design this school. This looks phenomenal, you bro. Tell. You used three different colored markers? Damn. <laughs> so this example was a Georgia property, and this is only for specifics. So it's not necessarily a fund. So the fund has an extra step, but let me just walk you through the basics. So the syndication LLC, it's a fund, so we'll probably create this in Wyoming, is not going to actually own the property. It's going to own the property LLCs. But we have a syndication LLC, which is the main LLC. That's actually the security that you're issuing. You're selling shares, in this case, membership units in this syndication LLC, right? So that LLC is owned by your investors. Typically, we create a separate class from them. So class A is typically what we do. So investors will own class A interest in that syndication LLC. And then you guys, the sponsors, will own class B interest in that LLC. And this particular example is an 80-20 split, but it could be infinite, right? 70-30, it could be perhaps, it could be Whatever the structure, we haven't gotten that far. But this in this example, it just happened to be an 80-20 split where the investors put in all the money, got 80% of the ownership, and the, the sponsors took their 20% as technically what we call a carried interest or what we, you know, sweat equity or for putting the deal together. So the investors are going to hold their interest. However, they're going to hold their interest. It's not our concern. Uh, of course, we, we're happy to help them if they have questions, but they may hold it in their individual name. They may hold it in their own LLC. They may hold it in an IRA. Like who knows, right? Then separately, the 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 20%. In this example, we typically, we recommend everyone, I don't know if you have one already, but we recommend everyone having some kind of a holding company just in general, not, not specific to the syndication. Theoretically, because this syndication LLC will already be in Wyoming, if you don't have a holding company now, it, it could be overkill. I would have no issues with Pace individually in his personal name owning some percentage of this syndication LLC because he's going to be owning a percentage of a Wyoming LLC anyway. But generally, you know, I have a holding company and most in my opinion, everyone should have a holding company as the mechanism how they hold assets. They shouldn't really hold assets in their personal name. So that so those are the that's the ownership, right? And then to the side, which you know, if you notice, it's it's broken line because there's no ownership. You have this management LLC. Every LLC needs a manager, so we create a management entity, a management LLC that is the manager of the syndication LLC. It has no ownership. It just basically it gets hired to work as the manager, and so it collects all the fees, right? So if there's an acquisition fee. If there's an asset management fee, if there's a disposition fee or refund, at least a thousand fees you could do, any fees would be paid to the management LLC for doing the work. Uh, but the 20% profit, the profit piece, the equity piece would go to the So is there company. a contract between the syndication LLC and the management LLC hiring them? Yes. Yes. It's part of, we don't, because it's the manager of that particular entity, we don't need a separate agreement. It's, it's, part and parcel in the operating agreement. So the syndication LLC will have its own operating agreement, obviously. And in that operating agreement will be provisions that we've hired. The management LLC will obviously disclose that the management LLC is you know, owned by the sponsors and controlled by the sponsors. But um, that's going to be in the operating agreement of the syndication LLC. And then the next level, which let's leave that for a second later, but the ownership then of the management LLC versus the management of the holding might be a little different as well. But it's ultimately still going to be, you know, Pace. I mean, Pace, you, in, in this structure, you personally would own, you and your or your spouse or your or a living trust, if you have one, would own the holding company. But I don't like you to personally own the management LLC as well. So uh, the way I have mine set up right now, Mauricio, is I have a, a living trust and my living yeah. trust hold, um, owns a holding company. And so Perfect. my holding company then has all of my LLCs underneath that. And then each individual C, I think we have like 35 LLCs that are all owning individual yep. assets. So this is it. That's the same okay, one. Cool. Yep. There's no reason for you to create a separate holding company. You already have one. Whatever that holding company is, will own your cut of that 20%. Okay. So technically, let's say that Cody Barton, my partner, him and I are 50-50 in our ownership portion of this. So that would mean that that holding LLC would actually be two separate because he has his own holding company as well. Correct. Correct. Yep. 10% okay, each. Okay, great. So there would actually technically, I know this is a little bit complex without being able to draw on it, but technically there would be two holding companies owning that ownership, 10% Correct. to me, 10% to him. Correct. And if we were really crazy, we could create a holding company together if we really wanted to. And I wouldn't call that crazy, by the way. And, and I would, you know, since you've got uh, the PCS uh, here, guys, um, it, you know, there's an argument to do that, by the way, because generally speaking, multi-member LLCs are much stronger than single member LLCs and, and husband and wife counts as a single member for this purpose and you have a living trust. So we'd have to go back and look at the Arizona rules. But if the Arizona rules are weak and they don't really like single member LLCs, even though it's a Wyoming entity, 
there's always a risk that the you know a judge in Arizona says you know whatever I'm going to make my own rules. Um, so there is an argument. Multi-member LLCs are stronger than single-member LLCs. I think sure. what Cody and I would do is we would probably for this fund keep it completely separate from our existing corporate structure and create a new corporate structure. We would create a holding company LLC together. And um, then we would own individual ownership in that holding company, maybe underneath our living trusts individually, because Cody has a living trust and I have a living trust. Yes. Perfect. So in that structure, both of you would be 50-50 owners of this new holding company. And that holding company, there'd only be one holding company that owns that entire class B, right? So the entire 20% in this example would go to the holding company. And then from there, it would be split 50-50. And then on the management side, I think you guys already have, uh, Pace, you have already have a, unless we want to create a new one, but you have a company already, right? It's sort of a, a sponsor company, right? No, I think we would I think we would create another one separate from anything we okay. have. All right. So great. So in that case, we'll, we'll create ABC management group or whatever you want to call it. Uh, probably if it's 50-50, it'll also be 50-50 between the two of you. Um, and that also, I would just have, you know, you guys individually own that as well. I would not, some people make the mistake of having the holding company own the management company. And again, we want to keep these separate. Okay. So that management company, I guess I could individually own it in my personal name because it is in Wyoming. Yes, correct. Or your living trust. Okay. So it's okay for my living trust to own the holding company and my living trust to own the management LLC. Correct. Then that's the direction I would go.